to commit to a fixed address. We may begin with regular attendance at a home group and work our way up from there. Others of us come in with all the trappings of a normal life, but find that the trappings are exactly what they are. We may need to break free from the ties that bind us to our old lives before we can be ourselves. Security, predictability, and a feeling of belonging allow us to change without feeling like we're losing ourselves. A member shared, when I was using, I always had a change of clothes in my purse because I never knew where I would wake up. After I got clean I started picking up more and more furniture until my house was overflowing. Later I realized I was taking on all this stuff to make sure it was hard to move. I didn't really want more dishes, what I wanted was to know I was going to be somewhere for a while. Serenity may be the presence of peace or the absence of chaos. Many of us have gone through life by default, as if events simply happened to us. Our sense of ourselves was so distorted that we felt like we had no impact on the world. When we understand the first step, we realize that, I'm powerless over everything, is a cop-out. We are powerless over our addiction, and we cannot turn back time. Beyond that, we may be amazed at the ability we have to make choices and shape our lives. Our relationship with the world is a reflection of our relationship with ourselves. We are open to new ideas, new ways of thinking, and new ways of seeing what we think we know. Trusting people who believe in us allows us to try new things even when they seem frightening, and to have faith that the changes we see are real. Our sense of stability within ourselves allows us to take greater risks, whether that means being willing to pursue a new career or to put our hearts on the line with someone we love. When we learn to trust that stability, we can let go a little more. We no longer spend our days or nights worrying, or wishing, that it will all go away. I'm so afraid to show up and grow up that I dream of running away, starting over, leaving it all behind. We fear security because we don't quite trust that we are capable of sustaining it. Staying with the process of our lives without creating upheaval and drama can be a new experience for us. Stability is important for us to thrive, but there is a difference between being stable and being stuck. It may be that we stop moving forward because we have arrived at a destination. Of course we want to enjoy the fruits of our labor, but we run the risk of enjoying that fruit until it rots. When I got clean it was relatively easy for me to make the transition to a normal. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 6 A New Way of Life 97 Lifestyle Said one member The fear of change kept me paralyzed there We have a hard time distinguishing between a niche and a ditch There are some signs that help us to distinguish serenity from complacency when we get judgmental, ungrateful, and agitated, we're probably on the wrong side of that line. When interacting with others starts to seem exhausting or burdensome, or we forget that we are important to others, we might be slipping back into self-obsession. When we're feeling apathetic and ungrateful, we say we're bored. Boredom usually means we can't see past ourselves. We get lost in pettiness and illusion. The world is as boring or exciting as we make it. A member shared, when one day starts to run into another, it's usually because I'm not living my beliefs. 
when we revert to old behavior, we need to get back to basics. Plan time does not exempt us from getting stuck. Sometimes a new perspective on our lives requires a new look at the steps. We may find that a better attitude is really all we need, or it may be time to make some changes in our lives. We are able to recognize our responsibility for our actions and motives more often, and sooner in the process. Identifying what drives us helps us to find relief from all the ways the disease shows up in our lives. It also gives us the ability to move toward what we want, and not just away from what we fear. We are free to create a life that we value. When we are collaborating with our higher power, action and surrender go hand in hand. We can spend a lot of time trying to convince our higher power how things should go. Each of us has had the experience of trying to will something into being and finding that the most bizarre obstacles arise until we finally understand that the best thing we can do is to let go. On the other hand, sometimes a challenge or commitment just keeps placing itself before us. No matter how hard we try not to do it, it seems unavoidable. When we surrender and try, we are astounded at what we can accomplish. The more completely we surrender, the more we are able to follow through on our commitments and shine. Getting out of our own way. So much of our experience is a result of our perception. We may feel very grounded even though the outside circumstances of our lives are in flux. There are also times when everything looks fine, but we feel like we're coming undone. We can come through letdowns and redirections and see that we are still succeeding and progressing in our lives. Or we can feel like a failure even when everything is actually going along just fine. Perhaps what we perceive as good or bad is simply an event. We make it good or bad by our attitude toward it and our response to it. We can turn a simple setback into a drama that lasts forever and is everyone else's fault. We get through difficulty much more quickly if we simply accept it and keep moving. Letting go gets easier when we learn not to hold on so tightly. It may be that the sky is not the limit for us. There may be limitations set by our lives or circumstances that make some of our choices for us. More often, we are held back by barriers we put in our own way. We get so accustomed to thinking of ourselves in particular ways that it's hard to imagine otherwise. We can be brutal to ourselves. Giving ourselves a break is one of the most important skills we gain in recovery, and it is critical to our ability to Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 98. Change It's hard to learn something new if we can't allow ourselves to be imperfect. Our shortcomings and defects keep us from being able to act in our own best interest. Some of the hardest things to get free of may be our own beliefs about ourselves and our limitations. Obstacles give us a chance to examine our willingness. Some of us fight our way to a goal despite physical disabilities, criminal records, or other hurdles. The obstacles in our path can make us more committed to our goals. We find a way to do the impossible. At other times, barriers drive us to think creatively and to look in other directions for where we can best use our energies. How often we succeed or fail is not the measure of our program. Our setbacks don't have the power to define us. Failure is experience, strength, and hope in disguise. 
It is incredibly important to learn the difference between failing at something and being a failure. When we are honest, we begin to take responsibility for our part. Remorse can fuel a new willingness to change. Failure, just like success, has an important role to play in our lives, taking us places we would never choose to go. It can free us to pursue new things, and to seek even broader horizons. Sometimes what we experience as failure is actually a redirection. We can get so focused that it takes a serious push to change our course. After getting through a hard time clean, a member said, I needed to fail. I was completely out of control because I thought I was completely in control. I had confused outside success with internal growth and recovery. We respond to our own fear by getting more controlling, and create more problems as a result. Often when we are deeply challenged in one area of our lives, other areas start to suffer. When things get difficult, it never seems like just one thing goes wrong. We start using old behaviors again, even though we know, or we once knew, that they don't work. Unmanageability feeds on itself. A hard lesson in humility reminds us that we never graduate. When we stop practicing the basics, we are in trouble. It takes courage to put ourselves on the line. If the risks we are taking are real, then certainly sometimes we will lose. If we don't occasionally fall short, it probably means we are setting the bar too low. We learn through our mistakes, and the experience can strengthen our faith and resolve. Most importantly, we don't have to do it alone. As we accept that we will be okay even when we are disappointed, we start to feel a little more comfortable with the idea of taking risks. We learn to listen to our instincts and start to move with the rhythm of our lives. We can respond to changes as they happen without being distracted by our desire to judge or explain them. We set goals for ourselves and move toward them a day at a time, an inch at a time, knowing that when we're doing the right things, the right things tend to happen, even if they're not what we anticipate. We have a tendency to act as if our progress doesn't count until we have arrived at our goals. Learning to keep going through setbacks or hard times allows us to continue moving forward even when things are not going our way. Some of us never get where we meant to go, and it does not mean there is anything wrong with our recovery. We are not staying clean for the rewards, though staying clean can be very rewarding. Whatever gifts we do or do not receive, we do well to remember that there is nothing. Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 6 A New Way of Life 99 Wrong today that a case of withdrawal won't make worse. We all experience loss and hardship at some point in our recovery, and if we are not willing to accept that as part of the process, our desire for success can turn insidiously into a reservation. If we are ashamed by the difficulty we are going through or feel that we cannot be honest about our struggles, our relationship to the fellowship will suffer no matter how much clean time we have. Many of us have expectations that if we do our recovery right, there will be no difficulty or pain and we will get everything that we want. These expectations can be legal. We may want to believe that if we work a good enough program we won't ever lose, when in fact working a program helps us keep going no matter what. Some of us experience only small losses, while others endure tragedy, sometimes over and over. 
Moving forward isn't easy, but it's what we do. We can't set limits or time frames around our feelings. I needed to be brutally honest about how I felt, said a member, even when it made my stomach hurt. I was sad, angry, afraid, and jealous of others who had already succeeded. We don't need to be told how to experience our feelings, but it's nice to know we are loved and supported through them. Once we go through a hard time clean, we know we can get through difficulty and be alright. We start to believe in our own resilience and to trust our recovery. We find faith and strength inside ourselves that cannot be taken away unless we give it away. If we have a history of failure, it may be hard for us to believe that success is a possibility. Our past experience may not always be a good guide. Just as the second step taught us that insanity is doing the same things and expecting different results, sometimes we do different things and expect the same results. Even though we are not doing what we always did, we still expect to get what we always got. We learn that things really can change for us, if we are willing. If we want something we never had, we will need to try some things we have never tried, and have some faith. When we change our actions, beliefs, and motives, our lives change, but not always the way we think they will. The open-mindedness we practice in our recovery gives us the ability to be flexible when things change in ways we hadn't expected. I've learned to be open-minded about all kinds of things, said a member, including what makes me happy. We may be free a long time before we recognize it. We are careful not to hold one another back or discourage one another from trying to follow our dreams. After many years of sponsorship, one member said, I finally realized I wasn't going to keep anyone from doing what they really wanted to do. The question was whether they were going to be comfortable sharing honestly with me about it. When I set demands or limitations, I became one more thing for my sponsees to work around. We help each other to see clearly what we may be getting ourselves into, but we also listen for our own guidance. The real issue may not be our ultimate failure or success, but our faith in the process. Another addict shared, I had years clean when everything fell apart. Marriage, job, finances, and my relationship with my kids. People reminded me that every clean day was a successful day. That didn't seem good enough anymore. I thought they were putting me down, but I actually was successfully working and not programmed. I needed a priority adjustment. I'm still putting things back together, but today I am happier and more fulfilled. We start to see that big changes in our lives are not the end of the world, just the end of a phase or an Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSC 2012. 100. Experiment. A member observed, I thought, no matter what, men don't use even if there's an earthquake. But I am learning it also means keep going even when you don't feel like it. Continuing to do as we were taught even when the sky is falling doesn't just get us through. When we experience hardship, we can get angry and resistant. It can be hard to sit through a meeting or hear what anyone else has to say. We think we can just put our heads down and go through it, but that tends to make things worse. It's like saying, I'm just going to run on my own until I get through this hard time, then I'll turn it back over. When we keep coming to meetings even with our attitudes, we hear the message in spite of ourselves. 
we show up, and the message finds us whether we are looking for it or not. We learn from the experience and we grow. We often find that the new place we are in as a result is better than what we had resisted letting go. A leap of faith. Now gives us different versions of success and failure than the rest of the world. Our lives are successful because we are clean, we help people, and we have a relationship with a power greater than ourselves. That can be hard to remember when our outsides are in turmoil. If life is a dream, then we may occasionally have nightmares. We experience ups and downs, but we have a disease that tells us it was always like this, however well or poorly we're doing. We can get drawn into thinking either that we're immune to failure or that life will always be difficult for us. We each go through hard times and great success, and we learn that they are not the whole story, or even the most important part of the story. Both success and failure can be challenging for us. Some of us create crisis because we don't know how to deal with positive experiences. We may fear success because it will bring more responsibility, and that feels like a trap. We may be concerned that success will lead us to lose focus on staying clean. It may simply be that avoiding a challenge is easier than risking failure. Perhaps we don't feel worthy, or failing feels normal. Recovery is a process of evolution. We want to become the best person we can, doing work we feel is important, feeling loved and valued. There cannot be only one way to do that, because we are all different. We want to be given a road map to success, but few of us find that kind of specific direction gets us very far. We learn what is right for us through our own efforts. We may not have dreams when we get here. Our experience may have taught us that it's not safe to share our dreams or to want them too much. We have to find a way to hear our own desires. Over time, we gain a keener understanding of what it means to live in harmony with our beliefs. Even when we share our lives with others, our willingness to fulfill our responsibility to ourselves determines our ability to feel love and be satisfied with our lives. It's the integrity with which we live our lives that is important. After all, if we don't like who we are or how we act, if we find our own company uncomfortable, does it really matter what or how much we have? We build a foundation, a fellowship, and a life, not necessarily in that order. Those of us who have been fortunate enough to be involved in developing and not community know how gratifying it is to grow something from a seed. The experience is unlike anything we know. Many of us devote ourselves heart and soul to Nah, and the process of building our own lives comes later. We may find ourselves beginning a career or to seeing to our financial security. Living Clean Approval Graph for Decision at WSC 2012 Chapter 6 A New Way of Life 101. Years after our peers seem very settled, there is no right or wrong way or order in which our recovery happens. We all have experience starting over in our lives with new people, places, and things, stepping into a new way of life we don't quite understand. The desire to survive and feel fulfilled is not unique to us as addicts. In recovery, we begin with connection to others and work our way to basic safety. And perhaps it has to be this way. To believe that we can trust the love in our lives is challenging. Those really deep needs are the ones we believe won't be met. 
It begins with the immense process. The understanding that we can forgive and be forgiven, that we can take responsibility for our actions and make better choices. Throughout our recovery we improve our behavior, our attitudes, our perspectives, and our lives. The awakenings we have as we work the first 11 steps give us the ability to act in a new way. We ask for knowledge of our higher powers with us and the power to carry that out. After all the surrendering and house cleaning in the previous steps, a constant conscious contact in the 11th step changes us. The more we embrace our powerlessness, the more deeply empowered we are to take action in our lives. Our basic text tells us that we find God to us in the things we value the most. We may describe this in very spiritual language, or just know the feeling of being at one with what we are doing. I know I'm doing my higher powers will when all that noise in my head goes away. On some level, this is all about faith. Living our dreams requires that we believe they are possible. When we act on faith, we move in a positive direction. It can be very frightening and sometimes a little weird. Taking a leap of faith asks us to trust either that there will be ground beneath our feet or that we will be able to fly. Small steps give us the courage to leap. Commitment. The tools we use to practice our recovery serve us in all our affairs. Imagination is a tool, and when we give ourselves permission to dream we are using that tool to explore our own hearts. It can be frightening to look at what we really believe, what we want, and who we are. By practicing prayer and meditation, we learn to listen to our own inner voice and to know when something is true for us. The people we trust help us to sort out the truth within us from the driving voice of compulsion. We make decisions born of desire, just like staying clean. We tell newcomers to suit up, show up, and give not everything they've got. Why shouldn't I do this in other areas of my life? A member asks, learning to dream is important, but it's not a way of life. Willingness without action is fantasy. It's one thing to have faith in a power greater than ourselves, and quite another to have faith in ourselves. Some of us take a long time to come to believe that we can contribute to the world in a way that serves a greater good, or that serves our values and sense of purpose. Doing the right thing when no one is looking is an act of service to what we believe in. Some of us call this integrity, the sixth step calls a character. Whatever we call it, this practice is the discipline that forms the basis of our growing maturity. As principles go, discipline might be one of the less popular. We talk about commitment almost from our first day clean. We make a commitment to show up, to stay clean until our next meeting, to call someone before we pick up. Acting on the commitments we make, Living Clean Approval Draft for Decision at WSP 2012. 102. Requires discipline, and that's a skill we develop as we practice. It doesn't come naturally to most of us, but our long-term goals are often served by postponing short-term gratification. Discipline is commitment in action, a demonstration of our willingness. It is different from willpower or self-will in that we are not trying to force ourselves to change. We are changing our relationship to our own behavior. The more we trust the process, the more we are willing to practice discipline. I got where I am by the grace of God and a stubborn refusal to go away, a member shared. 
when discipline and faith come together, we begin to become the people we wish to be. Talent or interest may come naturally, but any skill takes practice.